monkeypox has come to our shores. We're only looking about a couple of dozen cases, but the government has now urged uh, that, uh, that there should be 21 days isolation uh, for close contacts, uh, high-risk close contacts of those already infected. Let's talk to Dr Chris Smith about this. He's a British consultant virologist, lecturer at Cambridge University and presenter of The Naked Scientist. Good morning to you. Morning. I have to say, one thing you can say about monkeypox, all the pictures we've seen of it, at least it looks like a proper disease. I mean, it's absolutely horrific to look at, isn't it? It's very close relation to the smallpox uh, disease, which, of course, we eradicated in this country some years ago. Um, but there is there is rising concern. I worry that some of this is just a bit of media hype and hysteria. Should we be worried? Cases at the moment are really low, as in, you said, a couple of dozen. It's about 20 that have been declared. But we are expecting that number to go up a bit because as we go looking, we find. And if yeah. they're looking, they're looking for a reason. And in other countries, there are also a rising number of cases. Now, we don't know exactly why this is on the move right now, but this is not a new disease like COVID was. This is yeah. something we've known about for decades. And yeah. it probably reflects either movement of people, people doing certain things in certain ways, or it could possibly represent a change in the behaviour of the virus. But I think that's really unlikely because these viruses don't change very much. They're not like the flu, which is a moving target. They're quite stable and they tend to be the same disease over and over again. And they periodically leap out of the animal world where they're normally based. Despite the, the misleading name, monkeypox is not a monkey disease. It's a disease of rats and, and other rodents. And occasionally it jumps into bigger animals like monkeys right. and like us. I was just going to say, why on earth is it called monkeypox? Now, there's no doubt at all, this is a, a disease of Central and Western Africa. Um, I had someone, I saw someone on social media, a mirror journalist, complaining about all the pictures being of monkeypox on, on darker skin, saying she was really bored, with, tired with seeing that. Of course, the vast majority of people who will have had monkeypox will have been in those regions, which are largely populated by people with darker skin. Um, we... <laughs> So, but it is now hitting Europe. We know that there is a spate of cases, more than would normally be found. Um, where do we think they just come from? Then, is it people who have travelled to some of the countries? We think Nigeria, where it's endemic. Um, you know, people have travelled to Nigeria and have come back to this country. Why is it particularly affecting? Uh, we understand gay and bisexual men in particular. That seems to be where the early cases are. What's going on there? Hitherto, we've had a handful of cases, and they've all been connected to people traveling. So people go abroad to endemic areas, as you say, West Africa is one, Central Africa is another. They encounter the infection because it, it's, it's in the environment and it depends upon what sorts of things people get up to when they're in the bush or wherever they've gone. They bring the infection back and because it's quite a dramatic presentation with this rash mm. and so on and they've got the travel history, we pick them up. Yeah. But what sounded the alarm bells this time is that, yes, one of the cases did have documented travel to a part of Western Africa, and they brought the infection back. But what we're now seeing are people who appear to be without any kind of travel history, and many of the cases are a bit disparate. There's no obvious connection between them. Yeah. And that suggests there must now be spread within our community here. Right. Now, obviously, there's got to be something underpinning that and underlying that. There must and have been some... Was there some talk about there might have been a super spreader event that these are all linked back to somehow? Well, when you begin to investigate, because the first thing that public health doctors and, and physicians, practitioners will do is to begin to ask questions, where are you, where have you been, who have you been with, mm -hmm. and when? And you can begin to draw the dots together and connect the dots to try to see what the pattern is. And you ask all kinds of probing questions to try to discover where is this spreading and what could be the source. Yeah, and that I mean, doesn't matter what the sort of outbreak infection or even the Salisbury poisonings were the same way. They pieced those back yeah, together. And it's a very and painstaking uh, a bit, of, bit of work, isn't it? In terms of how it is spread, it has got a 21-day uh, incubation period, hasn't it? But you largely can only infect other people if you've actually got these horrible sort of blistery pustules at the time. Before you get them, you're not infectious. And when they scab, when the scabs come off, I mean, I'm sorry, everyone eating their breakfast. If you're having cornflakes right now, I'm sorry, I've just put you off. Um, then you're not infectious. But there is that concern. But how is it actually spread? I mean, the concern about COVID, of course, like flu, it, it's a respiratory disease. So you can get it from not even having actually very close contact with people. So how are people actually catching it? The thing which caught us all out with COVID was that people were, were actively infectious before they had any symptoms for maybe a day or two. Mm. But with this, we're pretty confident that people are infectious 
when they're clearly infected. Yeah. So when you're symptomatic, and the symptoms include having a fever, muscle aches and pains, and this skin rash, which, as you've pointed out, many of the pictures have been a bit misleading because the media have delved into the, into the photo library and said, give me a picture of monkeypox. And unfortunately, this is showing the more dramatic presentations of the Central African form. What we're seeing here is better represented by what the UKHSA have got on the .gov website at the moment, right. which, is a, which is a more mild illness and, okay. and therefore more mild skin disease. But a person is infectious when they're symptomatic. They can breathe out this infection. They can shed it from the blisters, the fluid that's in the blisters, Ew. and they can uh, put the, the virus onto their immediate surroundings. This means bedding, bed linen, clothing can actually become infectious for a while. So if you are in contact with those things, you can pick up the infection. And that might be why, as you mentioned earlier, we've seen a number of cases among a certain sector of society, yeah. men who have sex with men. It may well be that people have been to some kind of event, some gathering, some party, people are pointing the finger at perhaps at pride events, that kind of thing, yeah. or things building up to that, which may have led to people getting together. And you, you don't just have to have sex with someone, you just have to be in very close, close proximity to them okay. and Con you can transmit the infection. Consultant virologist Dr Chris Smith, thank you very much indeed for that.